Okay, can you guys hear me now? If you can hear me now, just put yes, I can hear you in the chat box. Okay, great. So I'm go back to the screen share. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay. So again, one, if you have any questions, put it in the chat box as you've already done already. Um, if I don't get to a question after you've messaged me, I will DM you um, a response or an answer. Um, if you guys have not checked out the Pregnancy After 40 podcast, please do so. We have great stories on there um, from women over 40 who have had babies, um, whether it's 40, 42, 43, 46, 48. So we've got great, great stories, great guests. Um, they are members of our group as well. So you can find that on the website at um, pregnancyafter40.com. I'll give the information at the end um, of this event. Also, beginning next week, every Monday, we're going to have expert guests in on Monday at 8 p.m. So we recently, we've had a couple fertility doctors on, we've had doulas, we had a midwife, we've had nutritionists. So we're gonna keep that going um, beginning this year. So please join us every Monday at eight. We'll also post who's coming up for the week. So if you're interested, um, you can join. They will be targeted for just, just different areas in your pregnancy after 40 journey. So whether you're trying to conceive, um, currently pregnant or even postpartum, we'll have different guests for just those different phases in your pregnancy. Um, also, we just started the monthly walking challenge. Um, it is a separate group. It's a pregnancy after 40 walking challenge. You have probably about 50 members in there now. Our challenge just started yesterday. Um, the goal is to walk five days a week. Um, at least 30 minutes or 7,500 steps. And sometimes we just need some encouragement or a community so you can check us out there as well. Um, so here we are with this question up here. Um, if you guys can just tell me how old you are currently and how long you have been trying to conceive so I can just get a feel for uh, where people are in their journey right now. Um, I know some people may just be on the fence. They may be thinking about um, trying to have a baby now. Some may have been trying already um, for three months, six months, or a year. Some people are, are contemplating IVF or other reproductive methods. Um, so this, was, this event is actually tailored to people who want to try to conceive naturally um, or before they even visit a fertility specialist or a doctor or before they even engage in IVF or IUI um, or, or egg donation, any of that. So, um, Mary, I see that you are 40 and you've been trying to conceive for 10 years. Uh, Tanya, you're 40. You've been trying to conceive since 2019. OK, great, 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 great. So, um, Sarah, 41, six months. Awesome. Um, if you guys are trying to conceive, is this your first baby that you're trying to conceive or do you have other children? If you can let me know that in the chat as well. Um, all right. I see you've been trying to conceive for a year with breaks. Um, okay, great. Um, so I, a little bit about myself real quick and I'm going to go into that story. So I have three children. I've had two babies over the age of 40. I had my first son at 41 and my second son last year um, at 43. There were times that I was trying. There were times that I wasn't trying. And so um, just kind of been a culmination of everything, everything that I've learned in speaking with people. So in just getting just fertility tips and how to actually conceive. Um, and has anyone here tried IVF already, IUI? Have they visited with a fertility doctor? already. Sarah, I see that you have a 14 year old daughter and you're trying again. Um, that's awesome. Um, Alicia, 41, six months, you have a three and a half year old. And Moret, I see you're trying for your second baby. So cool. Has anyone tried um, IVF or IUI so far or visited with um, a fertility specialist as of yet? Or is anyone thinking about it? 
So this is also going to be geared to those people as well, because there are certain things. Um, I don't know if any, if any of you have caught any of the fertility doctors that we've had on, but there's certain things that they advise and suggest as well before you even try IVF. Um, sometimes people don't even think that they can prepare ahead of time, but you definitely can. And that's what we want to talk about tonight is getting you prepared before you even get there. Um, so you are at optimal health um, if you have to go that way. Um, Mary, I see that IVF, um, egg quality is not so good. Um, I also, for um, those who have listened to the podcast, um, if you listen to Julie Chang, she is a fertility specialist. She's got a great book. Um, it's called Cracking the Egg Myth, um, Proven Ways to Improve Egg Quality. So um, if you want the information, let me know. I can send that the information over to you. But it's a great podcast as well, where she gives good information, but way more detailed in her book. So great. So introduction, this, this is the order. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, how we started the Pregnancy After 40 community. I'm going to give you about three fertility tips in this event. Um, the new program that we came up with, and then you'll have a chance to um, ask some questions. I do have a small Q&A session. So this is me. This is my lovely family. Um, by day, I am an attorney. I've been practicing for a little over 15 years now in Georgia. Um, I have started, I started the podcast, the Pregnancy After 40 podcast, the beginning of last year. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to think. We're now in 2021. Okay. So beginning of 2020, that's when I kind of started releasing episodes, started um, recording probably a little bit about a year ago. So um, again, I did have a son in February, so it was kind of put on hold. We finally did release it um, probably around March or April of 2020. So again, I have three natural conceptions, two babies over 40. I just turned 44 about two weeks ago. Um, so I'm on a little break and then, you know, I had my birthday and I remember posting, I, you know, I feel great, but I have literally have been either pregnant or nursing since I've turned 40. So 40, I got pregnant, 41, had a baby, 42, got pregnant twice. I did miscarry once, got pregnant again at 42, 43, had, um, my youngest son. So just turned 44. I'm still nursing. Um, but, um, it's been definitely, a journey for me since I have turned 40, but I feel amazing. Um, and I'm going to share some of those things. So my story, um, when I was 24, I got pregnant with my daughter. Um, I was super, super fertile at the time, was not trying. Um, so I got pregnant via pullout and, <laughs> you know, that's not something that I advise for anyone who's not trying to have a baby, but, um, also at the same time I was 24. Um, and our bodies are definitely, definitely different at that time or, or that age. Um, I had her when I was 25. It was a natural delivery. I had a midwife um, for that delivery, not necessarily by choice, um, but I was a single parent um, with her. So um, I actually just finished my first year of law school when I got pregnant with her. Um, and I went back after she was about one years old, graduated law school 2005, became licensed in Georgia 2006 and have been here ever since. So um, when I turned 30, um, I was uh, I got involved in a long term relationship. It was a 10 year relationship. It was a very toxic relationship, but um, at the time my daughter was uh, three, four years old. Um, I always wanted to have more children. I thought that I would have three, four, five children. I thought they would probably would happen when I was in my twenties, um, you know, or maybe early thirties, things did not go as planned. Um, so the relationship that I got in, my partner, he had already had three children from a previous marriage. He actually had a vasectomy. And I remember when we were dating early on, um, because he had just gotten divorced, he was having some issues with custody and seeing his children and all that. And, you know, he did mention that um, that he would actually reverse his vasectomy because he knew I always wanted to have children. Um, that never happened. Again, it was kind of a crazy, crazy, crazy relationship. It was very stressful, um, played a part, um, uh, havoc on my body, just, um, uh, my hair coming out and just stressing and not sleeping and back hurting, just a lot of stress that I internalize. And there's a reason why I'm telling you all this, but um, just kind of hard on me physically, just being in 
not a great relationship. So um, after a certain point, I just just tried to suppress my desire to have more children because the older that I got in my 30s, I thought, well, um, it probably is not going to happen. Most men um, at that point you know, either had children or didn't want any more children. And so um, I just kind of, you know, kind of just thought, well, I'm not going to have any more. I would just be my daughter, which is fine. I was preparing for that. Um, then after the 10 years, almost 10 years at 39 years old, we finally broke up, broke up that relationship. And then, like I said, I kind of accepted the fact that I wasn't going to have any more children. I thought, okay, when my daughter turns 18, I'll be about 42 and, you know, I'll kind of, you know, figure out life, my second half of, of my life. Um, I always wanted more children again, like I said, but thought, you know, it's okay. You know, I, you know, kind of put it on myself for, um, you know, not breaking up the relationship that I had previously. So it was okay. And then I reconnected with my now husband, um, who I actually met back in 2003 when my daughter was about one years old, right before I went back to law school. Um, but we started exclusively dating uh, when I was 40. Um, he was 46. Um, he didn't have any children, but he wanted children. Um, like it says here, I was really skeptical. We had a conversation. I was like, hey, you know, I'm 40. Um, I don't know, just like many of you think at 35 and up, you, we may not have children at that age. So I thought, you know, it may be hard. Um, and personally, I thought, well, he's 46. He doesn't have any children. He is probably sterile <laughs> um, is really what I thought, because I was thinking really and truly, you know, those of you that already have children, you're probably like, well, I've already had a child, so I probably can get pregnant again. And so I was thinking, well, in the back of my mind <laughs> that, you know, I was I was fine. Um, but I did kind of put it out there, I guess, as a defense mechanism, like, oh, well, you know, I'm a little bit older, it may not happen. I really thought I, I could get pregnant. Um, six months later, we weren't specifically trying, um, but we weren't preventing it either. Um, so we weren't using any protection. So, you know, six months went by and I thought, oh my gosh, I, I really am barren. I can't have any more children. This is crazy. And so I really started doubting myself. Um, and my body and my ability to, to have children, any more children at that point. Um, and then, um, six months later, I just, one night I was in my bathroom and I just had a complete meltdown breakdown and it just kind of like bald, like, like a little baby. Um, and I realized that I still had not processed that past relationship that I was in. I never mourned that relationship. Um, I just kind of was like, it's over. I'm good. I'm done. Like I am me and I'm just going to move on and did not shed a tear. And I probably should have because that person um, had 10 years of my life. And that's the reason why I was saying it was a very stressful relationship because I had all that stress from that 10, from those 10 years, horrible years, like built up inside me and I never let it go. Um, when I had that emotional breakdown. I had the, I was overwhelmed with the greatest sense of peace I have ever experienced in life. Um, and I knew at that point that one, I had up until that point, I had not given my heart to my now husband and I was kind of holding back. And I knew at that moment that, you know, this is the person that I want to be with. This is the person that I want to marry and spend the rest of my life with. And like I said, that piece, and I just felt totally different. He can even tell you in conversation that he didn't know what happened, but he remembers there was a change in the way that I um, interacted with him. So I actually ended up getting pregnant within the next month. Um, I was 40 and um, we you know, married a few months later. My son was born in, um, later on that year at 41, but it's so important. I try to tell people whatever your stress is, and it could be a job, it could be relationship. Those things are taking a toll on your body and you have to find a way to kind of, to kind of release it and let it go in order to get your body to a point to be able to even conceive. It's so, so, so important. So summer of 2018, again, that's when my son was born. Um, Literally a week after he was born, I uh, got on my phone. I was nursing him in one hand and I had a, my phone in the other hand. And I started the Pregnancy After 40 private Facebook group um, because 
when I did get pregnant with him, I was excited, of course, but then I was also really, really scared. Um, and you can just put in the chat, you know, how many times have you guys gone to Google, gone online and just been overwhelmed or depressed by the statistics and the numbers? I know I can't be the only one um, of, you know, just having getting pregnant at this age. And if we do get pregnant, the ability to have a healthy pregnancy, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm thinking a lot of women do do that. Um, so I just wanted to create a an environment and a community for other women as encouragement as we are on this journey. Um, yeah, Tanya, I see. <laughs> it is it is scary. You know, a lot of the messages that I get from uh, members is, you know, it's exciting, but it's also scary. And, and it is because we read so much and we're told after 35 that it's so, so hard. Um, so um, anyway, so after my son was born, I wanted to have another baby. And one of the reasons is, and don't feel hopeless. <laughs> I see you, Alicia. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to have another baby was because of my daughter. She hated being an only child. That's one reason. The second reason is my husband, again, he's 40, 47 at that time. I was 41. And I don't know, you know, what your physical level is, but when we get out the bed, it takes us like a good four or five steps before we can walk straight because our knees are still a little crooked from sleeping in it all night. So um, I just thought, you know, we were a little bit older. Um, I did not have the same energy that I had when I was 24, 25 with my daughter. So I wanted my son to have a playmate. So we, you know, tried uh, for the fall of 2018. And again, this trying was more so, um, well, you know, we're not going to use any protection. And I don't know, again, you can tell me if you've gone through this, but every month that my period came, I was just so upset and I was so bothered. I'm like, oh my gosh, just another, another month of trying to do this. So, and I'm thinking, well, I've got to be fertile, right? Because <laughs> I just had a baby, but it just, it just it was hard. So um, when my son was about eight months that next um, March, um, I thought, okay, so I've, you know, kind of not preventing, I didn't have any success. So I was like, well, let me get a fertility app. Let me take this a little more seriously. Um, how many of you have, have an app that you are tracking or you're using to track your fertility and um, know when you're fertile? And all that. And if you are using app, tell me you know, what app that you're using. But I, um, I looked at several, um, and I decided to use the Ovia app. So at that point, I put in all my cycles. And um, about a week later, um, I, you know, was going through the app, and it said, "Hey, you should take a pregnancy test because my cycle was supposed to be here." And I thought, "Wow, really?" Because I literally just put everything in. Um, I took the pregnancy test, and it was actually positive. Um, the interesting thing about that it was because when I decided, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna, we're going to start using an app. Um, I just kind of let it go. And I kind of just put my guard down. I was like, I'm just not going to try. We'll just try next month. Let me just go ahead and put in my information and um, we'll just try the next month. And so again, my body was at a place where I just was not expecting to have to get to conceive. And it happened again. So um, you have five apps, Mary. Let me l write down what apps that you're using or which ones you have used and which one you like the best. Um, so I did, I, okay. Again, so I did get pregnant. Um, I actually ended up miscarrying. I was 42 at that point. I miscarried, um, the next month. It was actually on Easter Sunday, 2019. Um, and I remember, you know, everything. And, if, you know, if some of you have miscarried, you know, it's just it's just a horrible, horrible thing. Um, I was sick. I caught a virus from my then eight month old. Um, we went on a trip, went out of out of the state, went on an airplane. He got a virus and I think he gave me the virus. And um, I ended up miscarrying because I had never had that particular virus before. So after that happened, I was like, OK, I have got to do something different. So, and I had to kind of deal with the miscarriage. So I started exercising again, started changing my diet a little bit, um, trying to get a little bit healthier to conceive 
Again, I um, got the OB app. I put everything in after um, visiting with my OB. She said if I wanted to try again, wait, wait for one cycle. Um, and I said, OK. And, you know, I expected it again to take a few months. And in the interim, I was like, OK, well, let me just, again, get my body right. And let me just kind of um, release all this stress and, and tension that I have. So, um, yeah, I, I ended up um, getting pregnant that May. So I miscarried in March and I got pregnant again in May. And again, it was another point where I was like, you know, I knew when I was fertile. Um, and me and my husband, we actually capitalized on that fertilization period. Um, but we had fun. Um, it was not stressful. Um, and we ended up again conceiving and I found out a couple of days before my son turned one. So that's my journey there. And I'll kind of talk about a little bit more in detail what I did um, specifically to help with fertility. I, you know, I believe that I help with fertility. Um, so I just want to go back to um, the creation um, and the continuation of the Pregnancy After 40 community. I talked earlier, um, started the Pregnancy After 40 podcast. That was uh, 2000, end of 2019, really last year, 2020 though. Um, began interviewing members um, and started reaching out to experts and um, people who had, um, who were doctors and anything related to pregnancy. Um, again, my son was born last year, February, 2020. We created the website Pregnancy After 40, March of 2020. And again, we started the uh, podcast um, last year, mid 2020. Um, so a couple of the experts that we've had, um, I will um, tell you about a little bit later, but this is the one I kind of referred to earlier today. This is Julie Chang. Um, I really, really love their episode. And I think that's kind of what got me interested in, you know, following this fertility journey and the things that affect our bodies and things that I wasn't even aware of. So, um, and her book is Cracking the Egg Myth, Proven Way to Increase Egg Quality. Again, you can kind of check out that podcast on your own time or the book as well. Um, and since then, especially um, the last month or two, we've had these different guests on. All their podcasts are not released yet. Um, again, there's a couple of fertility doctors, other fertility experts, and like I said, the doulas, midwives, um, childbirth educators. So I'm um, looking forward to uploading those and so that they'll be available to you. Again, if you ever catch any of our future sessions, you can ask them questions live. So we've had all of these on. Um, I've been on a couple podcasts myself as a guest. Um, a huge pregnancy podcast is Dr. Belin's Informed Pregnancy. He does interview a lot of celebrities, but regular people as well. I'm one of those regular people. Um, but it was a great interview if you want to check them out. Also, also the Birth Hour, um, it's a birth story podcast. That one was released last week. I believe. Um, so that is with Bern Hunt Palmer. It's a great um, podcast as well. So if you don't listen to podcasts, um, those are good ones to to check out. So um, after this three year journey, I call it three year journey now, after doing a lot of research on fertility, my personal experience, interviews with women um, and with experts, fertility experts, pregnancy experts, um, and having just hundreds of conversations with members. I'm about their journeys. Um, I, you know, kind of took an, a, taken a real interest in fertility and, you know, what we can do in, in a natural way. I'm a person, I believe, I do believe in science, but I also believe in natural holistic ways as well. And I think that you can combine the two and not just rely on one method. Um, so I have created a program. Um, I now have over 50 fertility tips. Um, and you can all, you know, you all can go online and just find them just different places. Um, but I have, you know, kind of put everything just in one format. Um, so um, our members and our guests, they have different, they have different experiences. So some have PCOS, some which is huge. Um, I have fibroids. Some people have, have had failed IVFs, um, cycles, IUIs. We've had a former stroke survivor. We've had people with type 2 by diabetes, type 1 diabetes. Uh, one of our most recent podcast episodes, um, Kelly, she's 48. She had her first baby at 48 via IVF. We've had, you know, women who are just 45 and over having babies. People have thyroid issues. 
Um, there's also an issue with male infertility. Um, we had um, Dr. Setton on last Monday and he was saying, you know, 40% of the cases of infertility um, are contributed to male infertility. So I'm not sure if you all have um, had your partners tested to see, you know, if everything is okay with them, because this is a journey, you know, you're, we're taking the egg, we're taking the sperm. And so that sperm has got to be you know, just as healthy um, in order to conceive as well. So like I said, um, we have combined over 40, 50 fertility tips. And what I really want to stress is with the tips that I've come up with, it really is a lifestyle change. Um, they're not just things you can read and say, okay, well, I'm just going to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to do this because there's just so many things. It's a lifestyle change from the standpoint that you want to one, create an environment and optimize your health in order to conceive. You also want to be able to maintain a pregnancy when you become pregnant. And then you also want to be able to live a long life. You want to be able to see your children grow up. You want to raise them. You want to see, you know, all of that. And so these tips, they're not, they're not things that you can do just right away and something will happen immediately. Um, they are lifestyle changes, definitely. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you're reading anything, um, it's going to take time. And I know at 40, at this age, we're just kind of like, oh, I don't have a lot of time. We just need to go ahead and do this. But, you know, the advice is just to kind of take a few months, pause, reset, and incorporate these changes into your life. And um, to, again, to, to be optimally healthy. Um, so if you can just put in, in, before I go into the fertility tips, you can put in the chat when you think of fertility tips, what comes to mind? And that's whether you're trying to conceive naturally um, or if you're thinking about IVF, what is the, what are some of the things that you constantly hear that you need to do in order to conceive? Um, and again, you just kind of put that, <clears throat> excuse me, you can put that in the chat. Um, you know, I'm sure we hear exercise. Um, we hear diet. Uh, we hear, you know, drinking water, those kinds of things. Um, so there are, you know, there's a plenty of things. And to me, you know, when I read certain articles, I'm just like, this is just a lot to do. They're like, you know, no, like you want to have the right fats. You need certain fats, not the right fats or good fats. And you've got to do, I just like certain things to me can be, you know, overwhelming. Um, supplements. Yes. Rest, sleep, lose weight. Um, and avoid chemicals. Those are all all good things. And to me, um, when I when I see things like that, people are like, okay, um, they're like, get sleep or get rest. And you're kind of like, well, how? Well, well, like I've got this going. I have a job. I have kids. I have, you know, parents. Um, you know, or how much rest do I need? Or supplements? Which ones do I take? What brand is it? Um, reduce stress. How the hell do you reduce stress? Like I'm trying to have a baby like, and it is stressful. Right. Um, and so, yeah, you guys are like, you're right on um, that. That stress thing is, is huge though. Right. Um, because there's a lot of anxiety that you have when you're trying to conceive. Um, and, you know, and I, I know like every month, you know, when your cycle comes, your period comes, you're like, oh my gosh. And you know, you kind of internalize it. Um, so yeah, one of the first things I, I'm going to give three tips here tonight. Um, but yeah, one of them first is going to be drinking a lot of water. Um, and we all hear that we've heard that all our lives. Personally, for me, you've all, I'm sure you all have seen um, my picture um, on the event. But I am um, not the, the healthiest person. Um, you know, I am, I am overweight. Um, but since I was probably at least 25 or so, water has been the primary thing that I drink. Um, you know, I just remember, I, you know, I don't buy sodas. I don't buy juices. Um, not because I don't like them. It's just, I, I'm not sure why. Um, but I drink water and that's, that's just been a go-to for me. And I attribute, I've, you know, never had to have surgery. I've always been pretty healthy, never had high blood pressure, never had diabetes. Like I just never really had any ailments and I contribute 
um, that to me, drinking water just for years and years and years. Um, you know, the recommended um, amount is 64 ounces a day. Um, I've also heard half your weight in ounces, which can be a lot. Um, but, you know, if you can get the 64 ounces in a day, that's great. I have a tumbler that I take with me every day. Um, if I drink two of those, I have gotten eight glasses of water a day. Um, and it can be hard to get in that water. So you just have to kind of be creative. They have those um, water bottles now. Um, I would try to screen share and show it to you, but I'm scared I'll lose the feed. So <laughs> I'm not going to do it. But um, the bottles where, you know, every hour you drink a cup, I believe. Um, and, it, you know, I'm looking at mine right now at 8 a.m., you know, and it tells you. Um, get started, drink a cup of water, 9 a.m., remember your goal, 10 a.m., keep chugging. They have lines for each hour. So that was a great way for me to actually drink my water, especially in my last pregnancy. And you do two of those as well and you get your water in. Um, another thing you want to do is when you wake up in the morning just to get everything going, drink a warm glass of water um, and do the same thing at night. So your body can just do what it needs to do and have enough fluid. But the most important thing with the water is it increases your fertile cervical mucus. I mean, it thins it and, and it allows the sperm to travel to the egg. And so that, you know, absolutely assists in conceiving. Um, and so that probably had a lot to do with me as well. You know, I've always, again, drink a lot of water um, because when you don't drink a lot of water, the mucus is a little thicker than it needs to be. So it's harder for the sperm to penetrate. So um, definitely, you know, get that water in however you can add lemon, add fruit, do whatever you have to do, but just get it in because it actually does help. Not, and it's not just good for you overall, but it's good for um, the conception portion of it. Now, when we go back to, um, I know someone mentioned stress, Tanya was mentioning um, reduced stress as one of the things in trying to conceive. Um, this is something that I wish that I had probably done a little bit more of. Um, and I was, that's yoga. Um, and I, a couple weeks ago we spoke, we had a doctor on a fertility doctor on the podcast, Dr. Ellen Wood. Um, she is a doctor out of, uh, she's in Florida. Um, and that's, you know, I always ask the doctors, the fertility doctors, what do you suggest for women to do when they, before they come to you and they're trying IVF or IUI? Um, and she specifically said, do yoga um, because it helps for your mind and your body. Um, that's one of the things that you really need to focus on um, is to learn how to take that stress and deal with it and process it and let it go. Um, who I have mentioned here, actually in the picture, we had uh, Wendy Opsler. She is a prenatal yoga therapist. She works with women when they're as they're trying to conceive and when they're pregnant as well and after and postpartum as well. So she was 40 as well when she had her, her son. Um, so she had really good information. The breathing techniques that they have are awesome and amazing. Um, so mentally, yeah, it reduces your stress and the anxiety that comes along with trying to conceive because it's, it's there. Um, and then physically it improves circulation. So you want to make sure that, um, all the blood is going to the uterus. Um, and, you know, acupuncture is also a good idea for that. Um, it helps with blood flow. Um, and to those women who are exercising, um, you want to make sure that you're not exercising too much, that you're not, you want to, you definitely want to do moderate exercise. But um, everyone that I have spoken with, doctors and fertility specialists um, and other experts, you don't want to do intense um, exercise because it actually takes away the blood flow from your uterus. So you want to, again, improve or do moderate exercise, but you don't want to do intense workouts. You know, a lot of us think, you know, if you go like really, really hard exercising that you're just going to be at this great level and you probably are physically, but it does not help with the reproductive areas. So, um, you know, you definitely want to um, work on that and just make sure, again, you're not over overdoing it. Um, Nora, you're asking me, what's her name? Um, whose name are you referring to? Um, just put that in the chat and I'll, I'll respond back to you. So again, so yoga is good for the mental side of it and physically they're both fertility boosters. So definitely, you know, take that into consideration, you know, right now during COVID, because so many things are online, you can find so many of these resources online. I know 
Wendy, again, the one who, who we interviewed, she has a program and I can, again, give you her information. If you just put it in the chat, I'll get back with you. Um, and uh, also, uh, one of the things that I thought about, well, whenever I see someone posing for yoga, they kind of look like Wendy, right? Like they're super, super fit and super thin. And I was like, yeah, I don't really see me like looking like that doing yoga. So I actually went out and I found a resource for yoga for plus size women, which was like great, <laughs> right? So I'm like, okay, I'm not the only ones. They actually have programs. So, you know, if that's something that you're interested in, you know, again, put that in the chat and I'll give you that information as well. Um, but that's something I definitely, definitely want to um, suggest for people to do as far as fertility. Um, and then the last one I'm really going to talk about is cleansing and detoxing. Um, we are now 40, 45 years old and we are not on the same playing level or the same playing field as our 20 year old selves or any other 20 year old. We really have to think that even if we are the same size, let's say, um, and that we exercise at this age, we have 20 years more of food in our bodies, 20 years more of alcohol, 25 years more of sweets, sugar, processed foods. Our body has so much more in it. We have so much more, been exposed to so many more environmental toxins. And so we have a lot more going on in our body, which, which really is preventing us or decreasing our chances of conceiving. Um, I don't necessarily believe that we're just like, like we're just doomed to not, to not have babies. We do definitely have to get our bodies again at optimal health. And we have to flush out those toxins, um, the metals, um, inflammation. Inflammation is huge, um, especially when you're talking about PCOS and certain other ailments that a lot of women have. Um, you know, studies have shown that cleansing is best to be done before you're trying to conceive um, because you are, you're releasing a lot of those toxins. And then once they're out, your body will be in a different place, in a better place in order to, in order to conceive. And so that's one of the things that's just like, that just clicks like, Hey, you know what? My body is just, I have so much more in it. You have more stress in it. You have 25 years more stress than you did at 20 um, or so. So I just, right here, I just kind of put, you know, differences between cleansing and detoxing, um, Detoxing is actually improving your liver and kidney health. So you're more so abstaining from certain foods. Your body does have a way of, of eliminating toxins, but sometimes we just put too much in it that it can't process it out as quick as we, quickly as we need it to. So while we're detoxing, and you can do either one of them, cleansing or detoxing, you can do it a natural way or you can do it with supplements. So it's totally up to you, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, you know, there's definitely resources out there to look into kind of an overabundant abundance of resources out there. But yeah, so I actually just started a cleanse um, this week. So today is actually my first day. Um, and I'm not, you know, initially trying to conceive now or get pregnant. But, you know, the thing that stands out is, you know, after having these two young children, I have a two and a half year old and I have a 10 month old. I want to be around. Um, and so I need to be at optimal health as well. Um, so, you know, the suggestion is to, you know, cleanse or detox um, two times a year. So, you know, it's the first of the year. Now is a great time to do it. And then you also want to look at, um, as I put in here, I, if we don't cleanse, you know, we have toxins in the umbilical cord when we do actually conceive. You know, I was reading an article about that. And so that's, you know, the importance of doing these things and eating clean. Um, so I hope that is, you know, good information. Cause I never even thought about that when I was trying to conceive, you know, the fact that I kind of need to detox and cleanse. Um, so any questions that you're asking me specifically about cleansing or detoxing, you just put it in the chat and I will get back with you. Um, so I just want to leave a little bit of time for questions and answers. So this is kind of going back to what I was saying before our 20 year old self versus our 40 year old selves. You know, I think both of these women, the one on the left is Tyra Banks, one on the right, Kelly Clarkson. Um, I believe they are both beautiful women. Um, Kelly's had two children, I believe. Tyra, she just had, I believe, a surrogacy, um, has a baby 
as well. And they look phenomenal now. Kelly, I, Kelly, I believe is about 38. Tyra's in her, her forties, but we're just, you know, we were at a different place in our twenties or younger. And so this is, just, I just put this up here just to show we get older um, and it's just going to take a little bit more work um, than when we were, when we were younger. So um, as we round out again, I was telling you that there's a new program that I have or came up with 50 fertility tips and I have taken, taking them from different resources, different professionals. Um, and I also, you know, again, I stress that it is a lifestyle change and you can't rush it. Um, one of the things that um, Julie Chang said, this is one of the fertility experts who has the book. Um, you know, it takes an average of three to six months um, before making or after making certain changes in your life for you to improve your egg quality. And so just kind of remember that, um, you know, one of my suggestions that I put when I give um, the fertility tips is to um, don't overwhelm yourself. And, you know, give yourself some time because we are battling 40 years of you know, just being on this earth and just taking in different things. Um, so, again, the, you know, taking on these lifestyle changes and the fertility tips, again, it prepares your body for tr to trying to conceive. It helps maintain the pregnancy and the longevity um, after you have the baby. So if you visit our website, um, there is the fertility tips, the 50 fertility tips that you can get access to. Um, we also have a new program where it's um, we're giving weekly fertility tips is via email. So again, in order to avoid becoming overwhelmed, um, we send out usually on an average of three tips a week. Um, and in that email, we give certain recommendations like specific programs. Um, you know, when they talk about living a healthy, clean diet, we give like actual plans excuse me, that you can use and refer to instead of someone just saying, don't eat, you know, bad fat, eat the good fat or, you know, things like they eat more fiber, like just having like specific lists of what can improve your egg quality, um, your egg health, and also your partner's sperm, because I mean, they're, they're in it as well. Um, you know, their health and diet and exercise is just as important as, as yours is. So I'm going to come with some videos, some guidelines, just explanations as well. Um, and then we also have a consultation in accountability fertility tip program. So that's basically if people, you know, um, sometimes you just need someone to talk to or you need to, you need someone to be accountable to or with. Um, so we will talk to you. We'll um, develop an individualized plan based on your lifestyle, your situation. We'll also have, we also have monthly account accountability calls. So um, there is just, you know, a wealth of information. We kind of just wanted it, put it together so it's in one place. Um, you know, again, by by default, um, I'm an attorney. So like research is a big part of me and I never put things out there unless I've actually researched it. So um, I feel really, really good about this. And again, you know, interviewing a lot of the experts and other women and guests, um, you know, come up with this program. So... I see the question. Um, the website is just pregnancyafter40.com. Um, it should be listed in the group as well if you want to go there. So, but very, very simple. It is there. Um, and if you have any um, if any questions, again, just put them in the chat. I, I can't see them all necessarily right now, but I will go back and I'll answer any of them. So if you want to join the walking challenge, let me know. We'll put you in there. Um, you know, also just visit the website if you're interested in getting the tips. Um, so there is a price point to them, but you'll see that on the website, not super expensive. Um, we are running a new year special for just a different program. It's not as much for just the getting the tips itself, which doesn't come with anything. It's just, they're just tips. So there's no resources or recommendations, but they are just tips there that's available as well. But if you want something a little bit more, we are offering that as well. Um, but if anyone, I am, I can see the chat right now. So if you have any questions specifically for me, um, let me know. Tanya, I see um, you want to join the walking challenge, which is great because you only need to get in five days a week. So um, I'm not sure if you're walking now, but if you haven't walked yesterday or today, <laughs> then the rest of the week is on you. You've got to get that in. But um, you know, if nothing else, you can start next week as well. So we start a new walking challenge every first Sunday of the month. That's where we are right now. 
Um, and so again, it's just really, really good just to have a community, um, you know, of like-minded women who are in the same situation. So you know, we all need to do it, whether again, we're trying to conceive or um, um, currently pregnant or afterwards. So, um, so you're asking me wild, wild yam. Any thoughts for fertility? I will get back with you on that. You know what specifically you can use for fertility. So, um, again, thank you for joining. It's been about probably about forty-five minutes because I got a late start. So, um, oh, awesome! You didn't run yesterday, so just make sure you don't do 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 too too much, Tanya, because you know we want to make sure that you're getting enough blood flow to that uterus. So, you know, don't over over overdo it. So. <laughs> Um, thank you guys for joining tonight. Again, every Monday at 8 p.m., it's Eastern time, sorry, it's like five o'clock Pacific time, um, we'll have someone on. So um, I'm going to put a list out. If you are on the email list, you'll know ahead of time who's going to be there. So you can decide whether or not you want to join and join that session. Um, and again, I'll post it in a group as well. So Thank you so much again. You can continue chatting. If you have other questions, putting it in the chat. Again, I will answer them as soon as I can. You ladies enjoy the rest of your evening and I look forward to hearing your pregnancy after 40 journey and hearing all the success stories of you conceiving and all of that. Be sure again to visit that website um, for additional resources, articles, and the fertility tips. Thanks again and have a good night.